One of the early concerns about the SVTS 2000 uh, was that it introduced coolant or introduced air into a cooling system when it was doing its process. So we, uh, in the last, at the Snap-on show, we just realized um, if we put a piece like this together, which is a uh, half inch piece of pipe with a garden hose thread on the end and a T at the bottom, just put it into a standard uh, five gallon bucket and there's about a gallon of coolant at the bottom of that. Now what we have here is a cooling system, a simulated cooling system that's quite, actually quite empty. So what we're, by doing this, when we hook this up like this, the hose automatically stays at the bottom of the bucket. So any coolant that comes out of that system is going to uh, be sucked back in. So when we turn it on, it's putting the system under vacuum. If I wanted to change a component here, I pull this off. What's happening is water is being pulled up into the surge tank, and you'll notice that the cooling system is largely empty right now. Nothing spills out. And what's happening right now is I change the component. This tool is putting the cooling system under a vacuum. So when I turn off the air to it, the system's under a vacuum, and you can see it's sucking water coolant out of this bucket. And it's actually refilling the cooling system. It's pouring the coolant into the surge tank and then it's draining back into the system. And as you can see, we started with an empty or a partly empty cooling system, and we've managed to not only change the component without refilling it, but um, we've changed the component without spilling anything, but we also refilled the cooling system. Now I'm going to do it a second time because now the cooling system is almost entirely full. And let's see if we can fill it up all the way. And this time, since the component is under the water level, if I take that off, it'll spill out. So this will give you a secondary, uh, a second look at it. We'll come back and do that in just a second. Uh, it's important, this is a follow-up to the earlier demonstration. I wanted to make sure there's at least a few gallons of coolant in this bucket down here, because if we're going to be refilling the cooling system, we don't want to run out and then start sucking air out of the bottom of the bucket. And that's why we have this rigid piece of pipe with a T on the bottom, which let make sure that we're picking up from the bottom. So we're going to turn the system on. What we did a minute ago, we started with an almost empty cooling system. And now the cooling system is largely filled, but there's very little water in the surge tank. And I see evidence of air in the system in a number of places. Um, let's run it again. So this is going to put it under vacuum, and this time when I pull this component off, it's below the water level, so the tool is going to have to hold the coolant in. And what you can see is happening is the air that's entering the cooling system here is bringing the water up in the surge tank, and some of it's actually going through the tool. So. Let's say now we're going to change this component. And what's happening right now is there's not a lot of airflow anymore. What the tool is doing is it is putting the cooling system under vacuum. Right now it's at about 10 inches of vacuum. So when I turn it off, that vacuum is up here and in all the other locations. It's going to put a suction on this hose that goes down into that bucket. And it's going to pull the coolant up out of it. And you're going to see that as the water will come up through here, through the tool, and through this. So I'm going to turn it off now. And there's the coolant going back into the cooling system. And what it should be doing is reducing the air in the cooling system. Oh, is it still moving? Well, you can see it's brought the cooling, it's, bringing, it's still bringing it up. So what we were able to do is, even though we introduced air into the cooling system to prevent any spillage, because of the way this tool is made and, and the hooked up into the overflow tank like that, we actually end up raising the, the increasing the amount of coolant in the cooling system at the same time. 
So I think if we experiment with this more, we're going to get a better and better result every time.